Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode, I've got a MOHO lander prepared because we've got a transfer window in five days and I also picked up a contract to get science data from the surface of MOHO. We previously had a orbiting uh, satellite doing scans uh, but and that had an orbital telescope, it had a magnetometer on it and one goo container I believe. It still got fuel and it took the readings from high orbit. It could potentially get the readings from low orbit, but it's a little bit short on battery power altogether. And uh, so I think it'd be better to send it off to another planet like Eve and uh, just use this to do the remaining scans in low orbit and the surface. Uh, we're also carrying other instruments. We've got a huge antenna too. I don't know if we need, it, uh, need one that big, but it'll probably be safer. We've got two goo containers. We've got, you know, thermometer, barometer, and also a seismometer here and we've got a solar particle collector we've got the surface ablation light laser light imager we've got a multi-spectral imaging platform and a core drill and so yeah lots of science we had and I really need to unlock more sciences especially I need to unlock the science that allows us to get tanks larger than three meters in diameter because this is really hampering us uh, seriously but uh, yeah, uh, so we've got this going for us, and it's got two of these rear guard liquid fuel engines on it, and a docking port to this stage, and this stage will dock with it. Uh, it doesn't have any RCS ports on its own. I put the RCS on the stage so it can serve as a tug in the future, and it is just a single nerve engine. And these little bubbles are the RCS fuel tanks. It's got solar panels, it's got controller on top, battery power, a small reaction wheel there. And uh, yeah, it's got antennae. Uh, it, it might, maybe I should put whip antennae, but this this will probably be all right. So yeah, uh, we've got a space tug. You can see a Sirius Delta V at the cost of really long burn time. But uh, it's pretty much the largest thing I could put on top of this rocket, which is just uh, nor my normal skipper stage plus the normal first stage that is recoverable. So at least we won't be uh, totally hurting. The cost of everything on top is 78000 so it's pretty expensive. But uh, probably worth it, especially since we have a contract to fulfill with it. So that'll be good. And I expect this little uh, lander will be able to biome hop. And it's not giving the right delta V right now. You can see it's got 2,460 uh, 2, meters per second. And uh, curb and thrust weight ratio of 1. Actually, I, I thought it was less than that. I think it's lying to me. Um, uh, you can see the seal. Well, hold on. Moho. Um, okay, yeah. It's got a pretty high thrust weight ratio. So it, it's pretty well off and it can definitely handle uh, multiple moho landings so we can do some hopping, biome hopping if necessary. Uh, I probably won't do that unless we get a second contract to get some extra data for moho uh, but depending on whether I need to unlock some more science that might be helpful. Okay so we've got that. Um, it might be interesting to add a moho to eve alarm uh, for the transfer of the um, wait, uh, of our existing probe. Is it really that close? Oh, it's only in one day. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's interesting. Yeah, maybe we should just move that probe off to EVE. Let me check in the research building to see if we've done EVE science yet. I think this is all uh, set to go. Let's make sure everything is staged right. And then the first thing I want to launch is the launch to Minmus to turn our tourists there into proper working Kerbals again. I'll show you that later after we go to the tech center. That's a good idea to review what we've done. So around MOHO, we've got the magnetometer scan, multispectral analysis, um, high over MOHO, goo container, high over MOHO, orbital telescope observations, high as well, and temperature scan. Uh, what we haven't done is any low over MOHO and the question was whether I should bring that uh, satellite low because it only has 200 electric charge so it's a tough for it to send stuff um, though the fact that it's so close to the sun is helpful it might you know lose electric charge when it's on the nighttime side and all um, yeah uh, Eve we've done nothing 
So I think it's much more valuable to send it over to Eve to do some science, if possible. Then again, uh, this says we haven't done much Ram Kerbin, doesn't it? Have we seriously not done the EVA reports? I uh, see the thing is, we sort of started a series with the save partway already, you know, so we were sort of in the middle of the save and then we imported it into this version of KSP. So I didn't do all the normal science, uh, or at least I had done all the normal science in the previous version before I imported it, but I had to clear all those out to make things consistent. Hmm. It's complicated. Um, well, we've definitely done some Minmus stuff. Moon we haven't done so much, and Kerbin we haven't done seemingly at all. Duna, well, we've got missions headed to Duna to take care of that. And Jewel. But boy, yeah, we need to get on with this science stuff. Okay, so this is Minmus Colony 1. It has, well, it has 92 days worth of supplies. 22 years of habitation if the modules, are, well, that's actually without the modules inflated, apparently. Um, yeah, because it's not showing the full crew complement here. It's only showing two. But we've got, it's basically the same sort of, whoop, go away. Uh, it's basically the same sort of thing that we sent over to the moon, right? It's got these inflatable modules. Uh, but this time, instead of having to do things piecemeal, I've made sure to pack the material kits here. But, there's a trick there, um, because they're over here, that means we have to inflate the modules before landing them on Minmus, before landing the whole assembly on Minmus, which means that we need a Kerbal on board, specifically an engineer, to inflate the modules, and then it can land. That possibly is a very dodgy business, I'm not entirely sure that's a good idea, but this is where we're at. Let me double check that these have control. This has a controller in it that we don't need it. Yeah. Uh, well, it says command. Um, crew must include a pilot. Says. Well, maybe um, I'll just add a little controller on top just to be safe. Because um, we're only sending an engineer. That's it. We've got solar panels. You can see the these are the fuel tanks, procedural liquid fuel tanks. We've got little twitch engines, which should be fine for Minmus. Might want to canter them out a little bit more. We've got little antennae up there. It should be okay. But, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough one. Minmus Colony 1, because obviously our existing colony hasn't satisfied anybody. And we're using two of these large linebacker boosters. They'll light first. Uh, the core will light mid-flight and then we'll continue on after that and then the skipper will finish orbit and then also transfer the module to Minmus the module itself will make orbit around Minmus and land that's the plan well let's see how it works I've already hired a new engineer for this not you guys uh, Max Lee Kerman is our engineer and let's not belabor the point We'll, we'll just launch and hope for the best. Alright, here we go with Max Lee Kerman. SAS on, throttle is up. And... Alright. Off we go. SRBs are go. I wanted to light the core engines before the SRBs go off, so let's fix that. Okay, I'm gonna ignite the core engines now. And separation. Clean separation of the SRBs. Still losing a bit of velocity there, but now we're gaining it. Okay, we should let go of the fairings now. Very good. Alright, skipper stage. And we exploded the controller on that thing. I really need to put some sort of heat shield for that controller or let it go further away before igniting the skipper. 
maybe uh, have the skipper on low throttle when we're close to it or something. I think we've got our boosters back. A little bit fast on the terminal velocity. Oh, I should have restarted. I put all y'all in here, but I, uh, I did that after initially starting the game. Remembered it in the VAB while I was building stuff. Well, looking good on our margins. I think this stage could actually help us get into orbit around Nimbus initially. Okay, let's plot for Mimnus. Well, before applying for Mimnus, I decided to check on the life support status. And while the supplies are fine, 55 days, and electric charge is fine, um, uh, the, the habitation isn't what was advertised in the VAB at all. Uh, maybe what was advertised in the VAB was only with the modules inflated, but it wasn't very clear, was it? Uh, now it's just saying 14 days like this. Really, in the VAB, it should just give the the situation for whatever it is. If the modules are inflated, then show the habitation for that situation, and if they're not, show the habitation for that situation. But anyway, uh, you note that uh, what we're going for is this PBI one on Minmus, and habitation has expired for all of them. The home is fine. Voyager, well, I mean, the electric charge would probably be restored if we actually turned to it. Okay, well, the moon is pretty bent on getting in our way. Uh, it's not really helping us too much It's uh, in terms of the overall delta V, but it is giving us a little adjustment to our inclination so we don't have to do a separate inclination change. Actually, our inclination when we get there is uh, still severe. What does this say? Ascending node uh, 43.6 degrees. <laughs> Um, you can see, well, well, that's after we pass Minmus, though. Um, on the way out, it's still not zero, let me put it that way. The goal was actually to move the node to Minmus to help out. But we've got a pretty close approach here. You can see 62 kilometers, so that's good. And we don't have to do a separate inclination change thanks to the moon. And our moon periapsis is 758 kilometers, not crashing into it. Very important to check. So burn in 12 minutes and let's do it okay ignition and minus transfer burn here we go okay let's see what's really going on here um, well, that's not bad for a start let's see It's not as close as I wanted, but yeah, we can deal with that. And the moon periapsis is just fine. So yeah, we'll wait until we pass by the moon to fix that at all. Our time to Minmus is eight days, so well within the the habitation limits that Maxley has. Again, hopefully the habitation will be much better once we expand the modules, otherwise this whole this whole thing is messed up. I wonder if Max Lee can do some science here of some kind. There aren't any scientific instruments, but maybe um lots of little buttons. Start recycler is probably a good idea. Seems like we've got enough electric charge. Mm, doesn't look like there's an opportunity for crew report. I should have given Maxley some inventory. I didn't give her any drill or anything. Hmm. Yeah, can't do a crew report. Could have had Max Lee EVA, but I didn't feel like it. We need to make more use of space tugs and that sort of thing, but that's time consuming too. Technically, we've got a reusable tug on our Moho mission. 
But that's because I have delusions of bringing that probe back, which may or may not be a thing. Okay. Just SAS, and we should add the alarm for the SOI change. That's in six days. Okay. Uh, so next, let's take a look at that Moho probe and see about sending it to EVE. Okay, well, since we were in sort of a weird orbit uh, here, we're sort of in a polar orbit is the thing, uh, ejecting out is really difficult, and I had MechJeb plot it because, honestly, I had no idea where to start out. Um, turns out that was the right place. I wouldn't have guessed that. And a part of that is because of the inclination with respect to EVE, uh, between EVE and MOHO, of course. Uh, so we do have a uh, EVE encounter there, but it's actually in seven days and not in the transfer time that we originally had plotted. So let's add this uh, maneuver node. You can see it uses pretty much all of our delta V, so we're going to have to be really careful about it. Well, um, I don't know if it's reading this delta V right. Well, all, uh, all the delta V in this stage, I should say. We still have this stage, and that would be able to capture around EVE, so that's good. Uh, we do want to do scans of EVE's surface. Uh, if there was ever a place that we needed uh, resources on the surface, if we ever wanted to do something there, it's probably EVE. Uh, so, yeah. And, of course, we want to transfer to Gilly as well later on. So, that's the idea. The fact that this only has 210 electric charge is a bit of a bummer, but uh, we'll go with this. And so that will be after the Kerbin to Moho transfer window that we're going to launch the lander in and also uh, where we capture our Mimus colony mission. So that is the schedule for us. Let us proceed. Okay, here we go with the Moho lander mission on probably the most legit looking rocket I've ever designed in with the stock system. Uh, of course, the parachutes and all that, all the other stuff for landing the first stage um, complicates things, but still, we gotta admit, that, look, that looks like a proper rocket right there. Alright, so here we go. Everything seems to be a go. And launch. Interesting shadow on the VAB there. Okay, we are now past the speed of sound. Everything is looking good. Approaching maximum dynamic pressure. Alright, separation. And ignition. And ignition. Fairing separation. All good. Now we have all y'all in here. Still can't figure out what's up with persistent rotation, not showing this dialogue to put itself into the into the toolbar. That's annoying. Pretty sure I have a version of uh, persistent rotation that does work in 1.2.2, but it's just uh, in this particular install it doesn't. Let's hold it at 100 kilometers and then we'll coast to Apoapsis here. Keep it below, well, around 20 and separation. And ignition. It occurs to me we might have heat problems because I didn't put any sort of radiator panels. We'll find out. That's a possibility. Okay, extend all. Whoa, that really means it. We can shut down there, and let's just have MechJab plot us our course. Let's see, maneuver planner. We need to select Moho. Wow, that's quite a thing, huh? Well, we want something... Probably ASAP would be fine, actually. 1,532, does it really actually get us there, though? Uh, create node. Ooh, this is actually a pretty good transfer window for Moho. We're really close to the descending node here, you see. That, that's very convenient. 
We should send more stuff. Yeah, I'm thinking we should send a Kerbal. But then we have to bring the Kerbal back. We should send a colony. 1,532 only. And then we hit Moho there. That's not much. But then we have to make orbit. Let's see how much that costs. Okay, well that's 3,700, so that's a lot more. But still. It's pretty good. Alright, uh, thank you Maneuver Planner for revealing that to us. We have our maneuver. Maybe I shouldn't get ahead of myself, but it is tempting because we don't ha uh, that doesn't require an additional plane change and the plane change maneuvers to Moho are always a pain. If you can avoid doing one of them, that's pretty good. And this is pretty much a home and transfer. So it's not like we have a lot of excess velocity to burn off at Moho. See, uh, it's possible that you could hit the ascending or descending node over here somewhere on some other transfer window, but then the there's a lot of extra velocity to burn off there. Well, of course, I probably should have put better burn time in as well while I was adding mods. Yep, the timing is going to be a little bit questionable. I think this is about it. You can sort of see that uh, we're going to be dipping low at this point if we start burning now, but, well, let's just go for it. We certainly have enough Delta V to make corrections. I want to make sure it's not pulling any fuel from here. That looks good. Yep. You know what? I think I'm gonna hold it there. Oop. Come on, stop. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna go around and let me replot this with uh, Mechjeb. Let's see. Let's try that again. Uh, yeah. ASAP, create node. Alright, new node. Very good. Yeah, better than trying to do it with all the inaccuracies. So we're gonna go around and then we're going to burn again. Okay, getting close here. I suppose we'll focus on Moho. See when our orbit comes around. Currently a crash course, but we can easily fix that. Okay, good times. We have our desired approach, it looks like, and that's fine. Okay, let me create a dummy maneuver when we get into Moho SOI. And... We'll create an alarm for that. I think I'll pass on trying to send something on this particular particular time frame, even though it's a pretty good one. I'll take a look at the VAB and see if there's anything I want to send, but probably we'll just pursue what we've planned otherwise. Okay, well, I've decided to attempt a daring adventure. Uh, we will have a single Kerbal with a very large habitat and a bunch of supplies, five tons worth of supplies, and our previous nuclear stage here. Try to do a flyby mission of Moho. And uh, taking a look at the Moho lander, we have a 132 day transfer, right? Um, I'm going to try and aim to transfer this over to Eve after Moho. Uh, you can see 163 days, there's a Moho to Eve transfer window. So if we could get to Moho a little bit late, we don't want to catch her into orbit around Moho because that's tough. Um, those 30 days, that's a lot of time in terms of Moho's orbit though. So yeah, delaying it is going to be interesting. But yeah, if we can transfer to Eve directly after that, that'll be a little bit easier on us as far as getting back home. Uh, we do have 5,421 meters per second to work with, but the whole timing is weird. The reason uh, we didn't go directly from Moho back to Kerbin is because the, the transfer window from Moho to Kerbin is definitely off. So we needed some other plan. Uh, there's no guarantee that our existing trajectory out of Moho would make for a good EVE transfer though, so we'll have to be flexible about it. As far as the amount of time we have to be flexible, we've got 416 days. And the habitation-wise, we should be alright in terms of that. Um, 
this habitat portion does not decouple from the transfer stage. It's got uh, it's dependent on the solar panels, the communication. I've added thermal control system radiators there just in case. And so yeah, and the intention is that uh, this stage would eventually, once it gets back to Kerbin, bring it into a suborbital trajectory, separate off from the capsule, and then the capsule will be free to bring our Kerbal back home. Uh, it seems like a extremely daring, dangerous mission kind of thing. So there's that. So which Kerbal should we send? That is the question. Same rocket, by the way. Not Bob, I feel. Valentina. Well, if there's ever a time to have an experienced Kerbal at the helm, I'd say Valentina. So this is Moho flyby mission. With Valentina. I know, nobody's gonna forgive me if I lose Valentina, but this is... This is our plan. It's very adventurous, possibly, well, yeah, I won't say anything more. All right, save and launch. All right, looks like we'll have to go with a nighttime launch. We don't want to delay. We know the transfer window is pretty close. So you go SAS on, throttle is up. Valentina looks all right. Well, here it goes. Okay, here we go, stage separation, and skipper. We still poofed the controller on the other stage. Well, not a major concern right now. We're focused on Valentina's safety. Alright, fairing separation. Very good. That could have gone wrong. Make sure, uh, this now says have home 52 days. Why? That's inflated and everything. Oh uh, well, start habitat. Missing machinery? Ah, shucks. Alright, we'll get her to orbit. Valentina will do those EVAs that we haven't done around Kerbin, and then we're gonna bring her back down. Okay, separation. Uh oh! Oh, that's not what I really wanted to do. Okay, um. Uh oh. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Well, so much for getting anything out of this. Um, hmm. So anyway, we can be free of. The, yeah, okay, there we go. All right. Orbit retrograde. I guess is all we can do now. That's puffing all on its own, and there's no controller on that right now. Actually, Val Valentina's coming straight down now. We've got sort of a wayward nuclear tug. I hope that doesn't... Well, it's bound to sort of crash into something, isn't it? I mean, on the ground. But it might break up in the atmosphere, so it'll be alright. Very expensive failure, though. Alright, through the worst of the heating. And it's looking okay for Valentina here. Yeah, I, I think I'll just skip... That, that, that was an expensive enough loss. I think I'll skip the whole idea of a uh, Moho flyby. Yeah, that was the nuclear stage right there. Valued at 49,999 funds. 50,000 funds lost there. We recovered the core stage at least. But the skipper stage is uh, gone. That's 13,000 funds. Okay, parachute deployment time. All right. Well, maybe we haven't done this crew report yet. 
No, we haven't. Flying over Kerbin's grasslands. Keep experiment. I think I heard her say something about EVAs. Well, I guess she can do that too. EVA? Um, take data. Um, perform all science. Yep, keep EVA report and surface sample. Board. Crew report from here. And recover. Well, science was done, but not as much science as we were hoping to do. 16.6 .6 science earned. And most importantly, Valentina is safe. Let and got some ribbons. Let's uh, let's just handle the Minmus colony situation first. Then, yep. Uh, yeah, it occurs to me I haven't really sent any mach machinery with that either. I don't know if those modules need it, or whether I had packed because I had just used the version that we had for the moon. Maybe I had already packed it in. I didn't check though. Anyway, let's turn to it. Actually, I had just uh, gotten Max Lee Kerman into Minmus SOI to do that mission when I got the alert for this mission, the Moho Scanner. So let's turn to the node and have this scanner transfer to Eve. This could take a little bit of time and we're a little bit late. I should have set the alarm for more than a minute ahead of time. Okay, coming close to the end of the burn. We don't have too much to spare here. Let's see, what's the periapsis there? 1,561 kilometers. Focus view. That's pretty good. Give in mind that this is a scanner and we don't want to get too close because that's not optimal. Looks like, as far as getting into orbit is concerned, though, that's more of a trick. Yeah, we're going way too fast to get into orbit. So we're going to pass right by, but that could work out. I wonder if there's any way we could hit, hit Gilly on the way out. There's a possible intersect right there, actually. Uh, I'm not getting any indication though. That's quite possible. Okay, well, we'll see if we can hit Gilly somewhere over there, but I, that's a slim chance. Otherwise, we'll get high over Eve and then we'll be done with it. Oh, we could try an air break in there, but that's dodgy. Let's just add the alarm for the SOI change. Well, this is getting out of out of Moho, so let's focus view and put a little alarm out here. Alright. Alright, back to the Minmus mission. Alright, we are now going to make orbit. It doesn't seem like we're gonna take much to get into orbit considering our orbital velocity is 257.3 meters per second. All right, let's find a spot to land. Well, the spot to land. We need to land close to our base. And that might take some either waiting or, well, let's see, set target or some sort of adjustment. I'll work on that. Okay, I think we can land on this round. Let me go retrograde, start things off. We'll have to inflate the modules before dumping the stage though. So that's gonna make things a little bit awkward. Also I checked the habitation modules have material, uh, not material kits, the, the machinery, but the agroponics uh, modules do not. Well I guess we should get inflating, let's see. Oh, does Max Maxley have to EVA? Maxley might have to EVA to inflate them. Okay, 
That would be from this hatch. Right. Deploy. Ooh. Deploy. Deploy. And deploy. Okay. Well, they're all deployed. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out a way to dump the skipper stage in the most uh, efficient way possible. Well, a reasonably efficient way. That should be it for it. Did it use any fuel from up here? No. All right. Set. Off it goes, and the little guys. Well, what's the habitation now? Still says only 104 days, but uh, we'll wait until we land before uh, starting hab quarters and stuff like that. Maybe that'll help. I don't know about the electric charge situation. We'll need to hook it up to the generator we have there. Okay, it's a heck of a module to try and land. At least it's reasonably maneuverable. In my calculations, I actually neglected the fact that the material kits go in here, so this actually has more mass and less delta V than I had planned for. Good thing the skipper stage did a little bit more work than, than it was originally planned to do. Otherwise, we'd been in trouble. Oh, that is awkward. Quite a way to treat a habitat. I want to get within 25 meters. But this will have to do. Plop. Yeah, we need to get it a little bit closer if we gotta cook up the pipes. I don't know, how much power do we need to start HAB? Uh, it looks like it's got enough power. Start HAB quarters? Okay, that one is a bit of a drain. But it looks like the HAB common is good enough. Um, maybe we could switch this to HAB common as well? No, it's already configured for hive quarters. Uh, so, well, now Rodsby has indefinite hive and home here. Uh, Melemony Kerman, two years and home for eight years. So this is pretty good. Um, and electrically, this is balanced, though at, on the nighttime side, perhaps not. But crisis averted for now, for a while. Uh, supplies, um, they only have 17 days of supplies. I really wish they could get supplies from here. So we'll have to watch out for supplies. Anybody else? Um, looks like the base on the moon could do with some supplies as well. Um, at least before we can move on to uh, taking care of the Moho scanner in 54 days here. And of course everything else. But good, at least we've uh, we've got them back to work. Uh, I think the better thing to do would probably be to ship some of them back home. Um, I don't know if we need them all here right now. I'll ponder that. This whole life support situation is really a, really a challenge. Uh, somewhat discouraging sometimes, but we'll have to work through it. Alright, but anyway, on this note, of this success, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.